eat to beat your diet burn fat heal your metabolism and live longer by dr william w lee md new york times best selling author and eat to beat diseases so generally fat or diet weight loss or shredding weight overweight obesity all these things are somehow a favorite topic for most of us and we all like fat we all like all fatty foods and all but same time we have been hardwired to tell it fat is bad and all these things so uh, this book is going to shake lot of our misconceptions regarding fat and metabolism and multiple other things as well so before i explain further let's get started so welcome to book dot tips uh, myself ramis yeah a quick summary is fat good uh, because we have been hardware to tell that fat is not good so but actually fat is good book will talk about that and uh, fat is not only good it is somehow an organ or it can do a functions as an organ and same time it can work like an gland as well like an endocrine gland which can produce hormones and all these things then we'll talk about uh, the myths like people think that okay lean is healthy and fat is bad so but the book will talk about like sumo wrestlers and all even they are very overweight they don't have any issues of overweight issues and all these things so they are good there so it's not all about weight even if even if you are lean you can have uh, like metabolic syndromes and diabetes and plaques in your vessels and also the weight is not an end of everything and we weight less or if you are underweight it is not everything is not safe also and uh, covid-19 and fats uh, it will tell that the people who are been having obese they are having higher risk with covid-19 and all we'll talk about why the book talk about the uh, bruce lee secrets dr william lee explains some topics there and uh, yes the initial book has multiple sections the initial part of the book talk about uh, metabolism how fat and all this medical aspect is we'll focus more on that second and third second part basically it's talking about recipes food materials and all i'm i'm not going to go there but i'm sure if you're really interested i would really recommend it to buy the book but we'll not go much detail there and the last part is about how to plan and how to have an attitude about food and all these things so mainly uh, dr william lee he's a uh, harvard uh, medical professor and he has a good reputation in the medical field he is part of uh, androgenic foundations and all we'll talk about androgenesis so brown fat and thermogenesis this was an interesting discovery uh, because there is there is a myth or or as as we mentioned the fat begets fat it's not your genetics that is getting fat or getting the, once you get fat that fat breeds more fat like that so there are two type of fat brown fat and white fat like when you are in a shower or something or when you are in a swimming pool when you get cold you sh- you sh- shiver because your muscle is contracting to create heat so that's called thermogenesis so during the thermogenesis the brown fat is helping us to create the thermogenesis the more we can activate thermogenesis we can get fat to burn and we can get the white fat to be get burned otherwise the fat will get deposits there and then it will create its own problems snoring sleep apnea we'll tell about what is its impact on fat and all being overweight is not bad so don't take much care about weight even though it is a good thing uh, to have a proper weight but that's not end of everything and that's not a start food as a medicine and uh, the diet especially the diet is considered as something like uh, a sacrifice or a deprivation or freedom of food and all these things but here 
the will dr william lee is telling you have to live to eat so you should be hedonic on this one you can eat for pleasure but only thing is that what you eat and how much quantity you eat that's that's important but otherwise food is same time a medicine as well book talk about that and bonus some diet and i'll i'll add some suggestions from my side but as a dis- quick disclaimer this is especially it is a medical book uh, feel free to just contact your physician or medical practitioner for before you start anything this this book is just for information purposes uh, based on the author's opinions and views <clears throat> so first part is talking about how fat works so as i mentioned before uh, we have uh, like fat is not a villain uh because we, without fat uh like without water you you need water for to live but without carbohydrate you can still live but you usually have a fat in your body which can sustain you around 2 to 4 weeks without any food like that so as i mentioned uh androgenesis is what like when you eat food the excess food is getting converted to fat and it is getting stored as as fat in your body so generally that is what the thing because we live in a world where we don't have that much acrobatic or uh, physical exercises or something like that so that's why fat is getting deposited there so we have to do androgenesis to get that fat broken down into energy and all so there are multiple ways to do that uh, first one as i explained like maybe simple way to do explain it is you can eat a chili <laughs> it will explain like by eating a chili pepper chili you can have androgenesis also and if you drink drink green tea you can epigalactin uh, 3 galate in green tea is helping there and uh, eat some food some food material also similar to this so our body is ara- having around 60000 miles of blood vessel it is equivalent to like uh, reaching the earth twice so that much number of blood vessels are there in our body and uh, we have regeneration system stem cells around 750 million so even adipose stromal cells there are a lot of fat issues even under our skin especially mainly the fat is under our skin and that is under our visceral also they told it subcutaneous fat and visceral fat i'll go in details much to that but generally the point is that our body having all this fat and the same time our gut is having 39 trillion bacteria or something like that in our gut so all bacteria are not good or bad so our uh, people used to tell that our gut is our second brain so here we are talking about our second brain and one of the important ingredient or part of fulfillment of our work which is fat we are trying to find a balance and understanding about this both of the things so <clears throat> people eat diverse like more diverse bacteria and all so mainly your health is dependent on how much good you are feeding your bacteria maybe you did not think about that way but that is the thing so dietary foods actually mainly uh, it will feed microbiome there are prebiotic foods which is having lot of fibers and all which will help and there are probiotic foods which have live bacteria which can enhance your bacteria as well so as i mentioned your body has uh, around 40 trillion cells and each of them have dnas and doing functions and all but only 2% of that one is used to make proteins and all so there are some some level of as a, as a, as we discuss metabolism is not something genetic we used to think like that okay we tell okay i am genetically getting fat because my father and mother is fat maybe you'll think maybe it is getting feed like that but the recent study is telling that it's not the case even epigenetics where 
we can alter the gene by switching in and switching on of some of the genetics uh, genetics uh, part that's called study of epigenetics is to tell that we can switch on and switch off some genes even to get the fat metabolism and also for dna damage like telomerase uh, excess sleep and uh, excess food and uh, sleeplessness all these things also happening on dna thing and even some food even affects that so you are what you eat generally so that's the point so immune system is also like in our body immune system is also something like a car volume the book talks like uh, if the volume is too loud you cannot hear and if the volume is too less that's also not good so 5% of our fat cells are supply as usually 5% of the fat cells is macrophages it supply blood to the fat but for the obese people this macrophages become around 40% so which is causing inflammation and all so when you getting fat when you getting obese or when you getting overweight it's not like overweight of uh, like as i mentioned some more results when you get overweight and you fear feel yourself overwhelmed and all one of the main things is causing your problems of breathing and all the other things is because of the causing inflammation and fatigue and all these things is because of inflammation so visceral fat is actually the villain so abnormalities in insulin that is what we call metabolic syndrome and diabetes especially metabolic syndrome causes high bp uh, like uh, cholesterol sugar and as well so fat build plaque as well on the blood vessels that's what happen when the blood pressure go high the plaque will block the blood and uh, somehow that will rupture the blood vessels and causing heart attack and all so type 2 diabetes is happening which is most prevalent form of diabetes happening because of the body fat maybe that's understood from you you used to tell that okay eating sugar is causing this one but yes but the problem here as we mentioned fat is i'll i'll talk the villain part of the fat but same time it is it is not that harvard harvard study used to tell that that uh, there is a stress on endopl- endoplasmic reticulum happening people people with uh, obesity they are having vulnerable around 8 times more vulnerable to type 2 diabetes compared to a normal person so usually we breathe around 16 times a minute that means if you live around 80 years of old you are going to breathe around 673 million breaths but the fat in your body makes your breathing difficult especially there is a fat in your throat that will create snoring there is a fat in your tongue that will create sleep apnea sleep apnea if i if i explain it simply like you are waking up in the middle of the sleep and then just you are not able to get uh, like breathe and all that that's what that's a point about that and also the the air air passage also having fat that also so covid-19 as i mentioned it is covid-19 the more risky was the people who is having fat because of the inflammation caused by fat even endometrial cancer such as happening in the ladies and all that's also affected by the same thing so let's uh, proceed uh, so surprising signs of fat health and disease that's what we discussed now so i'll go to chapter 2 rethinking body fat that's what uh, so first i talk about what's the problem with fat now we are going to talk about rethinking body fat so when you when you see small babies when they are fat we consider it as okay babies are in good health uh, so similarly as we mentioned despite massive size sumo wrestlers is also we look like okay these people are maybe very sick but actually they don't have any problem of this overweight diseases or anything like that so also similarly like sports athlete you see like athletic figures and all these things if your body fat is less than 5 percentage you will have problem even breathing so more is bad less is also bad of fat 
so even uh, adipose the word adipose come from the latin telling that rendered fat of pig or something like that so there as as two types of uh, fat we have subcutaneous and visceral fat so visceral fat if we even we have an organ in our body called omentum which is like a policeman in abdomen even abdomen having like intestine having some issues and all like it is ruptures or something like that this this organ or omentum is going to fix those those issues as well so the actually the process extra calories of the fat of the body extra calories you are taking it as carbohydrates as sugar everything is getting converted into adipocytes and it is stored as triglycerides in your body so what what we what is happening that is called lipogenesis so what do you what you have to do is we have to get the energy from fat maybe you know something similar to that about keto and all i'm not going there but we have to reverse this lip reverse reverse the process of lipogenesis which is called lipolysis so fat is the largest endocrine gland in our body you may not studied it as it is as an endocrine gland but that's what it is when extra activities are there fat will produce more hormones and when there is less even it produce hormones like leptin which is which is creating appetite and adiponectin help to body to maintain the right amount of glucose so especially that is the importance of adiponectin like sometimes used to people the doctors used to tell that you have to take the blood sugar level when you are wake up in the morning like fasting blood sugar why is because that will give you effect of adiponectin like how much is your metabolism under control by your own body without any food also it is an anti inflammatory pro- protects body from inflammation the fat and adaptive thermogenesis <clears throat> as i mentioned in the introduction summary like when we are getting cold our body adapt itself by creating heat when you are in a cold scenario so brown fat which is what turning up the heat in your body it was not much notice on human being the first a uh, brown fat was found by conrad gesner in alpine marmot it's like a rodent what what is the speciality of this rodent is that usually it eats and it, when there is winter and all it just go to the semi hibernation state and stay in the burrow for long time and that fat is getting converted as heat and it's staying there like that uh, but what the point is that usually this is what the animal thing but we were not able to find much of that from human beings we'll come about that much in the next chapter but we were not able to see it much and also similarly the same time the the body fat topics like even for females and gents the book talk about how during the the conversion from their adult to this one there is a changes in the body that's also creating fats and all so especially the body fat you have when you rethink about body fat these are the things first is it is same time an organ endocrine gland it create its own hormones and all these things even from gens the body fat and the risk it will just increases even for ladies and all some part of their body get less during puberty and all like waist and all some hips will get increased comparatively and that way the less will be there so men's are more prone to visceral fat compared to ladies in that sense maybe that, that's also i'm not talking from body but i'm just telling that's also like chronic like uh, cardio uh, cardiovascular diseases are less in the ladies comparatively and uh, another important part i mean it's something like psychological part the book did not explain that thing but book is explaining multiple times multiple areas talking about shedding weight because there is two part losing weight and shedding weight uh, losing weight is something like our we are loss averse people by nature by by ourselves 
so if you think about losing as weight our body will try to just compensate that but instead you sh- think of shredding the extra weight that will be a good thinking as well just a bonus suggestion in terms of from the based on the others thing so heal your metabolism that's what chapter 3 because we have we talk about metabolic syndrome we talk about fats how it is affecting and all these things so every human being is born with the same metabolism nothing special you were thinking no i am having one metabolism that's why my body is getting more fat so actually the body fat slows down the metabolism so it's control the metabolism you can control the metabolism by shredding weight so two parts if you body is getting more fat then the metabolism will reduce but at same time if you are going to shred some weight then your metabolism will improve so the metabolism the first part of it was found by egyptian physician ibn al nafis in 1260 ce so after that the one of the main maybe a famous experiment was done by a venetian physician santorio santoris in 1614 he make a metabolism thing like by trying to take their food and his excretion and he's trying to just compare it's like a crazy experiment by himself he tried to do that so mainly our metabolism also this may be an, an, another interesting aspect maybe we think that our metabolism good is when we are young or when we are teenager but then metabolism go down but the 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 studies or research is telling that we have four phases of metabolism phase 1 is born when we have year from the preborn baby until the first year age 1 age 1 phase 2 is from age 1 to age 20 phase 3 is from age 20 to age 60 so on all these three periods there is no big change happening only after age 60 there is a slight decline in metabolism so so metabolism here as we mentioned metabolic syndrome is actually the excess fat is damaging the metabolism and blood glucose is no longer getting absorbed that's called type 2 diabetes if you are having type 2 diabetes the thing is that fasting blood sugar maybe it's all medical terms 100 mg above 1 on 100 mg per liter and blood pressure is 130 by 85 blood triglyceride is above 150 mg per deciliter and maybe this is all not not a good terms to refer back until you have a medical report but an easy thing to check is that if your waist is above 40 inches for men and if your waist is above 35 inches for women then that is good chance that you have a more vulnerable to type 2 diabetes you can reverse the metabolism as we explained by shredding the weight So until 2009 we were not able to have much attention about brown fat but there is some one surprising incident happen they were trying to check the tumor of one of a lady on a cold winter day and for the ct scan to pinpoint the tumor it light up like that <coughs> and they just found a light up in there they found it that's a tumor or tumor or something then they taken out that one they, they found that it is not tumor actually it is like an adipose uh, tissue made of brown fat it's a hibernoma so actually brown fat as we mentioned brown fat will get activated when we are having outside or cold temperatures and all that's what the thermogenesis also we are explained earlier so chilly temperature release that uh, neuroepinephrine if you follow the uh, stealing fire by steven kotler and all you will understand this hormone it's a famous uh, neurotransmitter so when release it will activate beta 3 androgenic receptor and uh, so to get that one like usually when this is happening in chilly temperature when chilly temperature neuro epinephrine will happen and will create a release beta 3 then this will create androgenesis which is 
using your fat to heat up your body or imagine using a petrol to use a generator to use power your heater just simple as that but we can do the same thing without a chilly temperature using a drug mera mera background i'm not sure i'm telling it properly it is a medicine used to treat overactive urinary bladder what happens is that when you eat this one this medicine it will have a same effect of converting but i'm not prescribing to eat or this one i'm just talking based on what the book is telling so as i disclaim please don't do it so but uh, only do it with your physician only so brown fat is burned stored in the chili pepper activates even the as as we, as we explained the chili pepper activates capsicum it's uh, in your tongues even the tongue uh, decreases fat production and trp1 sensor in your tongue is going to sense that chili effect and that will activate brown fat so even eating a chili can reduce your body fat green tea we already explained as well yeah, you can eat to beat fat so even that is not the title of the book but it's most close to the title of the book so there are multiple books i'm not going in much detail as i explain it will be too much boring maybe on a summary so the book is talking about chlorogenic acid which is good for fat i'll read quickly carrots apples pear plum grapes oranges and eurosolic acid rosemary lavender because we were somehow thinking that okay fruits is fructose and we are not giving much attention to other foods but mostly we are being fed by the readily available fast food and all these things the book talk about you no know, if you go to old school the solution is there so beta d glucon in mushroom oats barley wheat is good lycopene in tomatoes watermelon guava papaya is good for fat androgenesis lignans in sunflower seeds uh, pumpkin flax seeds soya bean is okay and allergenic acid in tartness of cranberry raspberry pomegranate anthocyanin in natural pigment which is attracting the bees also good for that hydrotextrol from stem cell producing white fat a lot of topics like that sulfur friends in broccoli sprout or generally all these foods i am mentioning that is good for fat metabolism so maybe technical terms you don't have to catch much on it until you are in really interested and salmon uh, having omega 3 fatty acids that's also when you're eating you can get rid of fat so that's there and uh, chapter 5 uh, or part 2 of the book is food for metabolism here also we will not go much in detail there but the some of the greatest food culture is mediterranean and asian food culture because it's pretty old and both have having blue zones blue zone sense both is having area where people live longer compared to the other place they have long life so that means the both cuisines are results of millennia of exploration and elevation like evolution and experimentation of lot of things so even a combination of food in mediterranean nation food you don't see much but you will see how that combination is not only made for taste but it has other aspects as well there is some some level of thought and experimentation behind it so mainly through the silk road we you know the silk road which connect the uh, asia to europe and africa and all especially the silk road i think the word come from the chinese textiles and all but that silk road actually taken the cinnamon and oranges to europe and us and all so all these things uh, ch- generally so eating in eating in harmony is what these two cultures is telling mainly what it means that because we are having now refrigerators and all these things but all those times without having this these cultures promote in such ways that whatever is available on that season use those foods to feed your body so eating in harmony with nature so items available in the market not items available as frozen items available as processed food or something so book talks about 10 principle i will go through that maybe that's of help eat with intention just you should have intent is important 
ఈవెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎనర్జెటికలీ సైకాలజికలీ యాజ్ వెల్ సో ఈట్ విత్ యువర్ ఇంటెన్షన్ ఒక దిస్ ఫుడ్ యువర్ ఈటింగ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు అబ్సార్బ్ సో దర్ ఇస్ సమ్ సమ్థింగ్ కాల్ ఓ పోనో పోనో అండ్ ఆల్ ఈవెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అ జంక్ ఫుడ్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఈట్ విత్ ఇంటెంట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఓన్లీ గోయింగ్ టు అఫెక్ట్ పాజిటివ్ వే టు ఇట్ ఈస్ జస్ట్ జస్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ఫ్రమ్ మై రెఫరెన్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఇన్ ద బుక్ బట్ దిస్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ థింగ్ టు ఫాలో యాజ్ వెల్ జో విటాలీ అండ్ ఆల్ టాక్ అబౌట్ ద సేమ్ థింగ్ ఆర్ skip a meal or two that is a second principle of mediterranean uh, it is somehow similar to intermittent fasting and all go fresh third one as much as possible go fresh for personalize your food choices try to personalize based on your tastes and all yeah, so all these foods are anyway good but you can still personalize so respect the tradition so the traditionally as i mentioned there is some combination of food they are made by tradition or they should you should not do that sometime maybe we don't know the answer why those tradition is followed try to respect the tradition author is telling sure there is some there could be a reason for that eat in moderation especially he used to tell that you don't have to make your stomach full like at least maybe uh, in in islamic culture and all if i'm not sure the percentage is correct prophet muhammad used to tell that you should eat only half of your stomach and remaining quarter for water and keep the remaining as it is so so generally but we in our case we are trying to fill the whole stomach and maybe above the stomach until we are not able to eat we stop the food so that's the thing and uh, the seventh principle is drink trinity drink water much drink coffee drink tea part of mediterranean eat together when you are eating together it is part of this asian and mediterranean culture is that it will also somehow make you more modest in eating and you it will enjoy your eating as well open your mind and explore the foods that's also live to eat so you don't have to just feel bad about food instead you should be enjoy the food and you should live to eat also not like you are eating to live people used to tell that okay eat to live and live to eat so you, so eat to live is maybe the thing but here in this culture you can live to eat also this is also an important part of life you can enjoy that so that's about that and for, i think the other thing fresh market and all i already explained food like medicine food or medicine other other parts as well then part 3 i'm skipping lot of recipes and all as i mentioned if you like please follow it and uh, find your own way uh, the plan for life the book talks because the book uh, the author is a big fan of bruce lee so he's tried to explain some of his methods as well here so find your own way the way of bruce lee research your own experience absorb useful and reject useless this is a quote from bruce lee from the book he borrowed the best from all fighting if you follow bruce lee you'll understand that he even invented a martial art called jeet kune do and all where he tried to grasp all the good thing from multiple martial arts he is not only on kung fu he have karate judo all these martial arts he combine and take the best from that that's what the quote research your own experience absorb the useful and reject the useless so he borrowed all the best so he has five principle which author is telling first bruce lee principle is clean your mind of assumptions be formless shapeless like water so clean clean your mind of assumptions second principle is that understand yourself and how you react so understand your taste understand how your body react such things are important in the eating perspective keep learning to achieve mastery maybe this is applicable to multiple aspects but here we are talking about keep learning about the food to achieve the mastery on as well adapt to whatever life throws at you book talks about uh, the game of death how is fighting with that basketball uh, heavy uh, like long person if you remember the movie game of death be mindful of what you eat so that's important also just keep a track even the book talks about journaling the food i'm not sure how much practical it is and generally some additional principle from the author as well take small portions of food when you are taking food that's a good part thing to follow cute the clean plate club whatever is in your plate you don't have to clean it maybe your mother 
taught like that or see your teacher taught it but you don't have to don't wolf on food don't like predatory <laughs> things on the food slow eating suppresses hunger I used to tell that uh, even there are some some youtube videos and all you see like when you chew much and all that that even itself reduce the hunger thing because hunger is somehow it's like a survival mechanism of the body is trying to get it but that's not really important so mediterranean food is telling there is th- three steps to follow it one is swap your current food habits slowly in one or two weeks with just try to combine using Med- mediterranean food and all second thing is use some intermittent fasting and third one is maintaining and keeping it as it is so that's about that so that's a quick summary about the book interesting book and uh, same time a new york time best seller and he the book author is having another book called eat to beat disease as well so feel free to check it out until we come across with the next book bye for now thank you